There was a tentative deal about the debt ceiling crisis. A failure to reach alignment on the debt ceiling has caused the DXY and yields to explode upwards. It's therefore not surprising at all with a tentative deal being made that the DXY and the yen and yields could all come down, spurring a risk on appetite. But we need to understand if the charts are reflecting this reality or something else. Stay tuned, this is going to be a fun one. Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back KS family. My goal is to help you to be more of a financial and emotional blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth and positive excellence in the process. If you'd like to know where smart money is buying and selling inside financial markets, please subscribe. We'd love to have you here. Let's run the numbers. There's never a dull day inside financial markets and they always, every single rally climbs a wall of worry. The news headlines love to make a mountain out of a molehill. Well, sometimes they're not molehills, they're actually mountains. As I explained in the CTKS method service video that I put out just a little while ago, we can see that the US Treasury balance is decreasing. It's really going down. Now, what does this actually mean? It means the US government needs to raise cash. Therefore, we have two competing things inside the markets. Don't forget, there's always negative news inside financial markets. That's just how they're built. If you're waiting for a clear sailing day, so to speak, you will always be stuck on the shore of financial markets. Financial markets are always turbulent. In the CTKS method service video that I just recently released, I went through all of the tier one charts, all of the tier two charts and all of the tier three charts to give you a good indication of how to synchronize in with the market. You are always paid for synchronization. This is a key to understand inside financial markets. This synchronization factor is your key to success. And to get synchronized, you must look at a lot of charts. Unfortunately, a lot of people only look at the chart they trade and ignore all the other ones. This is a major reason why people lose money. What you will find, the tier one charts drive global financial markets. They're incredibly important to understand. And if you don't understand them, you'll always be kind of on a back foot and you don't want to be there. You want to be on a front foot. It's much better. The media exists to make sensational stories. It's always some drama, some problem, some Thing that's going out of control. That's why we must look at the charts. And when we look at Bitcoin's chart, what do we actually see? There's risk on behavior coming into the market. This is a very, very important concept. Bitcoin is a very sensitive animal. If the risk is coming out of the market, Bitcoin is saying, whoa, I'm out of here. But if risk is coming back into the market, guess what Bitcoin is doing? It's saying, hey, sign me up. We can see also structurally Bitcoin is coming into that 27,925 resistance level. It has a slight one above it around 28,100. But then there's a little bit of fresh air up until the next one. Remember, price is always moving in a wave. If it gets above a smart money sell area, if price is below, gets above that level, consolidates, generally retests, it's heading towards the next group of ceilings floors, ceilings, and we look at these as safety nets. It's very important to understand that interrelationship. Bitcoin is currently 27,644. Gold has been punished while yields and the DXY went up. Gold hates inverse real rates and the masterclass students understand this very, very well. Gold closed out at 1946 with yields potentially coming down the DXY potentially reversing, we may see some really good stuff happen with gold. And of course, other risk on asset classes. 
Oil closed out at 72.83 and we can see it has support below it around the 72.47 mark and a lot more below it around the 71 area and this is much stronger support. We've seen this support get tested and we've seen also that oil is a bit uh, in a bit of an upward trend. It wouldn't be too surprising if oil comes back to this 7460 level. Just keep your eye on what could happen with oil. Actually knowing the objective dynamic market structure is incredibly important. If you don't know these levels, you're always trading and investing blind. Junk bonds ended at 9076 and when we look at junk bonds what they're always doing is coming down to a structural safety net and there were a lot of structural safety nets inside the junk bond market especially around that 9031 these levels get magnetized as you can see that this is where price gets caught without the ctks method you can't see these things inside the market one thing to be aware of junk bonds indicate risk on activity when you see this this big big fall in junk bonds you can be assured that risk on assets are getting punished what do we see right now well risk is getting back into the market this is a very very important concept we can also see that risk is kind of going down a little bit. It could retest around this 9063 mark before pushing up to the 9108 mark. But we're very, very aware of what's been happening with Bitcoin. Don't forget, the main markets like to sleep, they like to close, but Bitcoin never, ever closes. Crypto doesn't close. It's open 24 hours a day, just like your neighborly 7-Eleven. What you see here is the junk bonds could explode upwards to this 9108 level, even beyond that, signifying risk has re-entered the market. It doesn't matter what the news headlines actually say, because we know what the charts are telling us. We read the news from the charts. The US 10-year yield closed out at 3810 and what we see is there's a lot of overhead smart money resistance. This is a really, really good thing. As yields spike up, the risk inside the financial system becomes greater. Encountering this smart money sell area, we already saw a rejection, but we do have smart money support down here. What could potentially happen? With the debt ceiling crisis being potentially averted, and of course it will be averted anyway, it's something that we've been talking about for quite some time. Politicians don't like putting themselves out of power. Don't worry about out of business, out of power is what they're all about. Of course they were going to solve the problem. What we see here is as risk returns to the market, Potentially, what we're going to see is a rejection and the yields, the two-year and the 10-year starting to come down. That would put pressure on markets to go up and in all probability, the DXY will retrace as well. The DXY closed out at 104.226 and we can see there's smart money buy areas or safety nets around the 104. 006 and even stronger down at the 103.848 mark. There's resistance up at the 104.471 area. What could potentially happen? With risk on coming into the market, we may see the DXY come down to this 104 area or even below at that 103 area. Just keep this in mind. Ethereum is currently 18.66 and 49 cents. We're going to have a look at other cryptos in a minute, but one thing that you will notice, there's not a lot of overhead resistance above Ethereum's price. There is a support coming in at around the 1785 mark, but you can see not a lot of overhead resistance. With risk on coming back into financial markets, we may, may see Ethereum just going for it. This is a very different case to BNB, Binance Coin, which is currently 310 and nine cents. With BNB, we can see that there are multiple smart money sell areas, multiple ceilings above the current price. This is why BNB could be somewhat suppressed when it comes to other cryptos. 
knowing where the objective dynamic market structure is, knowing where these smart money buy and sell levels are, is incredibly important. Your financial success depends on it. Silver closed out at 23,3165. And we could tell from silver's pattern, it encountered smart money buy areas. In fact, it didn't even get down there. There was one at 22.62. What we see is risk on behavior starting to be reflected inside silver's price structure. But be aware, there's some smart money sell areas, some ceilings confluating or aggregating around that 23.70 mark. So just keep that in mind. Every investor and trader's major focus is to get synchronized in with the market. That means that you must look at a lot of charts, not just the charts you're interested in. If you only look at the charts you're interested in, you will miss what's happening inside the economic system. Look at what happened to copper. And these areas, these Stanfield levels have been marked up since 1988. We can see the copper grinded through some smart money sell resistance levels, converted it to support. And now look at this fresh air gap, literally all the way up to 377. Copper closed out at 367. We may see some fireworks in copper. Keep your eyes on that. And you need to know what does it mean if copper goes up? And you also need to know how that relates to the economic cycle. The CTKS method helps us to understand where the safety nets are inside market structure. And if they're made out of paper or they're made out of concrete. And when we look at bonds, which has been marked up since 1998, we can see a lot of concrete is stopping bonds falling further. Bonds closed out at 125.31. This particular concrete level of support is very, very important. It's held up well. We can see a number of crossovers in bonds pricing. What do we expect? When risk comes back into the market, we expect bonds to rally. It's been caught by so many levels of smart money buying. This is where the smart money actually buys. It's very different from retail. Most retail wants to run when all the best sales are on from financial markets, but they want to run into the best sales of other stuff, such as consumer goods. Remember this, it's a really important concept. We know that we've got a lot, a lot of concrete space support and we're above it. That is indicating to the market that we have the probability of going higher and we're seeing fresh air gaps. When we look at XRP's price, we can see smart money sell resistance around this 49.65 level. But the structure of XRP is very, very different to that of BNB and also Ethereum. That's why you must know what you're looking at. A lot of people expect that when price does a bullish move, it's just going to keep going. The real issue is price is always encountering smart money resistance and smart money support. You can see when it goes up too quickly, it can reverse very quickly to find that smart money safety net. You're always dealing with a ceiling and a safety net. Just be aware of these things. What we do see is there's a lot of fresh air above XRP's price at the moment. Always encounter and predict that you can buy lower. Price is negatively biased by nature. All investors become traders anytime they buy or sell. So knowing how to enter and how to exit is vital. A lot of investors say, oh, I don't want to be greedy. I'll just buy at market. Buying at market is the single worst thing that you can do. It's a cardinal sin under trading law. Traders are completely different. They seek to get in on the right side of the percentage and make percentages work for them. That's after all what a return actually is. It's very important to do that. What is smart money resistance all about? We can see it playing out in ADA. When you have smart money sell areas, just say the price was below here, it comes up and tests those. 
Remember that the CTKS method is not drawn to price. This is the actual structure inside the market. And you can also see Ada pinged this and then went back, pinged it again, is trying to consolidate and go higher. This is why you must know where the smart money is buying or selling, or you'll continually get placed into the wrong side of the trade. You'll get shaken out of positions. And you can use the CTKS method, whether you're trading or investing, it makes no difference. That's why in the CTKS method service video, I zoomed out and showed you what was happening for the month. Solana closed out at 2085. Solana is a powerhouse. We can see there's smart money resistance at the 2114 level, so just bear this in mind. Solana made its way through those smart money sell areas, and with so much positive momentum, especially inside Bitcoin, Solana did incredibly well. This is one thing you always want to keep in mind. Solana is a powerhouse. It does very, very well. Never FOMO into any particular thing that you're trading or investing in. Why is that? Because price is always moving in a wave. Doge is currently 734. We can see that there's smart money resistance at this 741 mark, up higher at the 748 and also the 758 mark. This is looking a lot like BNB and not like Ethereum for an example, and not like XRP either, this overhead resistance will impact Doge's price. That's very important to understand. And the more areas of overhead resistance we get, it's like price trying to break through one bamboo stick. If price was, uh, you know, the karate kid, one bamboo stick, no problem, snap. It's gone. What about two tied together? Oh, that's a little bit harder. But yes, yeah, snap, it's gone. But three or four or five or six all jumbled together and trying to get through that, not so simple. Inside the crypto market, we know it all comes down to Bitcoin and rule 45. No all can escape Bitcoin's gravity. We know if Bitcoin goes up, what's going to happen to the rest of the crypto space? We go through this every day. Ethereum is going to go up. And look at this just explosion in Ethereum's price. Oh, if we could have only seen that, how could we see that Ethereum was going to explode? Hang on a second, we did. Because the CTKS method shows us if there's no overhead resistance, it can go for it. What about BNB? You can see the suppression in price. Oh no, that's due to objective dynamic market structure, which can only be revealed through the CTKS method. This percentage increase is explainable. What about XRP? XRP is not doing too badly. What about ADA? ADA is doing fantastic. Go ADA. But as we look at Doge, we can see a suppression. Doge can get explosive, but it needs to get through those smart money levels. What about Matic? Just playing around with Bitcoin at the moment, just hanging out like friends. And look at Solana. What a beast. Solana, when it wants to party, it goes really hard. It's like a character from Animal House. And if you know that film, drop a comment. If you're putting your hard earned money into the market, you really need to understand what you're doing. One of the best things that you can do is to learn the CTKS method. There's a couple of ways of doing that, either through the masterclass or directly at ctksmethod.org. This is the structure of the masterclass. First of all, you must know your foundations. You must know how the charts interact with each other. Then you need to know how to enhance your pattern recognition. You can see why pattern recognition is so incredibly important. But before you buy or sell, and there's so many ways to do that, you must master emotional control, which is rule 734. Because rule 733, professionals are not emotional. If you're emotional, what happens is your fear is taking over your buying and selling decisions. And that means you will typically buy and sell at the wrong times. 
If you don't know how all the charts interreact and interrelate to each other, you'll fall out of synchronization. If you don't have your foundations in place, you're in trouble, big trouble immediately. But if you can't find the market's focus, if you're not enhancing your pattern recognition, that will also desynchronize you. I'd like to thank the meditative mind for her very kind generosity in offering a CTKS partial masterclass scholarship. If you would like to apply for this, the link is in the description of this video. To be eligible, you must do more than just apply. You must show that you have persistence and commitment. The masterclass is more than three decades in financial markets of knowledge transfer. When people first get into financial markets, they enter the panic zone and the blame zone. This is where people lose money. They lose money hand over fist because they simply don't know the rules of financial markets. And it's very, very hard to unravel those rules. It's such a complex area. It takes decades to do. In zones three and four, People think completely differently to zones one and two. In zones one and two, people want certainty and that terrorizes them. Just look at the news headlines. Up to yesterday, it was all about the debt ceiling. Oh, the debt ceiling, the debt ceiling, it's never gonna be lifted. Oh, we're in trouble. And now it's going to get lifted. Oh no, the debt ceiling's been lifted. There's another problem. Welcome to the news. Don't follow the news, follow the charts. The charts will tell you the news. In zones three and four, we focus on probabilities and lots and lots of rules. Rules are incredibly important. They safeguard you. And the markets are always changing character. All you need to look at is your synchronization. But zone four is where you master fear. And as human beings, we live on fear. We have our survival instinct. But the financial markets are something different. You must be fearless. And that's very, very hard to do for a time until you know the rules. And when you know the rules, when you can short circuit that survival instinct with knowledge, you need knowledge and you need experience, you will find the world is at your feet. But it takes a while to get there. And it takes a lot of hard work and effort and dedication and commitment. It will not come easily. And if you think about anything in your life that you've won through hard work, you know that hard work is just the basis of success. You cannot avoid it. And this is why we focus on positive excellence. If you're going to make money inside financial markets, don't focus on making money inside financial markets. Ken, what are you talking about? That makes no sense at all. Correct. When it gets to success rules, they're often counterintuitive. Instead, you must be a learning machine. You must be persistent, commitment. Keep your cool at all costs, having inner and outer peace. Be kind to yourself because the markets will slap you around. There's no other way of saying it. They will do so. And if you're not kind to yourself, you won't learn the lesson. What does that mean? You'll get the lesson again, but it will be more expensive. You don't want that. You want cheap lessons. That's why being kind to yourself, and of course, if you're kind to yourself, you can be kind to others because you're focusing. You either win or learn and never blame. A lot of lack of kindness is just due to blame. Looking for a scapegoat. It can't be me. It's got to be someone else. I don't want to feel this feeling. It's not my fault. I'm not to blame. This is what people say. And what that does is make them learning deficient. Inside financial markets, you must consistently be learning. Learning is really practical when it comes to financial markets. If you learn, you're doing well because the market's always changing character. Yesterday, I put out a coffee club video as well as the normal video for the channel, as well as a CTKS method service video. Wow, it was a busy day off for sure. Hang on a sec, I don't get days off. There's going to be low liquidity in the markets due to the bank holiday and the Memorial Day weekend. So happy Memorial Day weekend, everybody. There've been so many fantastic comments in the last couple of videos. In truth, there's always fantastic comments in every video. We have just a magnificent global family. And if you're new to our global family of around 16,000, please 
reach out and say hi, we'd love to hear from you. In yesterday's video, we talked about getting more positive habits because positive habits will make you. All results come from the mind. So if you're not getting the results that you want, it's just a habit sticking in your way. Free Dentist said, I know a lot about bad habits and how to turn them into positive excellence. Hopefully these limited words encourage others too. Ex-drinker, ex-smoker, ex-negative thinker. So many exes I have. Accepting your bad habits is a nice start. Getting to know your enemy bad habits is better. This is a really, really good point. There are all sorts of bad habits, but some are stronger than others, just like support and resistance inside the market. If you can identify a bad negative habit, a really bad one, and you can do something about it, and Free Dennis said, act respectfully towards wrongdoers and the result will be miraculous in time. A lot of our negative habits are actually gifted to us by well-meaning, but you know, just people who don't have their act together. And we know as adults that it can be really hard to get your act together. So just be aware that many bad habits that you have may have been gifts. It's time to return those gifts. If they're not suiting you, if you're drinking poison, just it's time to throw it out. In the previous video, we asked about what are you grateful for? And Beardy said, I'm grateful for my humor, intellect, my wife, five kids, and for Bitcoin, and for the global family, and for Ken and Kate. Wow, Beardy, you've got so many things to be grateful for. Thank you, my friend. When you focus on gratitude, that immediately kills off so many bad habits. They can't handle gratitude. They squirm around and say, don't be grateful, be angry. And gratitude is something different because when you look at your life, there's always something to be grateful for. And Lan, thank you very much for your kind comment, my friend. We live in a day and age of abundance, even though there's a lot of turmoil and trauma out there. Dolphin was saying, Getting setbacks and being negative and emotional is not a good thing, and it's not a good thing. The world will throw curveballs at you continuously. When you're young, you don't understand this. You just think that the curveball is something out of normal or out of the out of average, but it's not. It's normal. Curveballs are always coming for us. We need to strengthen ourselves to receive them. And when they come, we need to batter up, step up to that plate and whack it, bat it, clear out of the stadium. FT said, since adapting positive excellence in a more conscious way, my life changed to be more enjoyable. That's just beautiful. That's what life is all about. When you enjoy life from one day to the next, that is pure wealth. A very big congratulation to Art and his wife celebrating their 39th wedding anniversary. How beautiful. Art said, we are both grateful for the trust and bond we have built with each other. And that they are dedicated to each other to the end. That's really beautiful Art and congratulations my friend. Crypto Badger said, I'm very grateful for you all and for life itself. We're grateful f to you and for you, my friend. And when you think about this, being grateful for other people is a beautiful thing. Brett, many thanks for sharing, my friend. We all go through sickness and sometimes we get a big barrage of it at just one time. And Brett's been having his challenges so sorry to hear this my friend and if you're having challenges with your health as well of course it can be a bit depressing being sick being sick is no fun at all and it doesn't have to just be sickness family or relationship breakdowns all sorts of things can pull us into what seems like a really really big pit but what's actually occurring you are mounting in your strength you're getting set up for the next promotion the next life rally. You're always gaining in strength. Don't let any setback psychologically phase you out. Just look at it and say, I'll get through this because you will. Also, those pullbacks in life make us appreciate what's truly valuable to us. Brett says, I'm also grateful for my beautiful and loving wife and wonderful son. 
And also to my friends, life is improving with every passing day. That's beautiful, Brad. The meditative mind said a couple of days ago, it's amazing how life begins to work for you when you shift your mindset to positive excellence. The universe starts to deliver things to you that you only dreamt of. The real well section of the masterclass is the embodiment of positive excellence and is a reset button for a negative mind. Once I started implementing your teachings, Ken, my life has changed incrementally and keeps changing. When I sit quietly each morning and thank the universe for everything in my life, I'm reminded of how I work for what I have, but it started with a thought followed by energy and emotion. Wow, fantastic MM. We have an incredible global family, and if you're watching, you're a part of that. That's all you need to do to get in. Just be a part of things. Please reach out and say hi. We'd love to hear from you. Better habits create a better life. So daily positive affirmations, just like the meditative mind was saying, are very important. A positive affirmation is when you say, I, and you believe it. If you don't believe it at the start, just keep on saying it and put your feeling behind it. Let's go through the CTKS Creed, which are daily positive affirmations for abundance, financial success, and happiness. Say these to yourself with feeling and your world will turn around. I know the universe wants me to succeed. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win all learn and never blame. I never let a problem beat me because I solve it with positive excellence. We know that all results come from the mind and a better mind creates better outcomes. It's all in your habits. By saying things that create positive habits and kicking those negative habits clean out the door where they belong. They don't belong in your life. They're hampering your life. Not in a good way. Negative habits just pin you down and stop you from being all that you can be. Inside our global family, the focus is for you to be more of a financial and emotional blessing to yourself and those you love. We truly want you to be all that you can be in this world. And you don't have to go out and smash other people down to lift yourself up. Competition is a very, very nasty thing and people in Zone 1 and Zone 2 can fake it out with their words like they're in Zone 3 or Zone 4, but you can always tell what zone people are in. If, for example, people give you a compliment then slap you across the head unfairly, that person is inside Zone 1 and Zone 2. They're being competitive. There's some form of jealousy playing out. Competition and jealousy go hand in hand. They're incredibly destructive forces. And when you think from a trading and investing stance, you cannot afford to inhabit any part of Zone 1 and Zone 2. You will lose money as a result. You don't want that. At a time like this, it's good to explain what does competition mean to you? And what do you think it means to other people as well? Do you subscribe to the concept that the only way to win is for another person to lose? It's good to have a chat about this in the comments. Our global family is focused on learning and it's a safe environment inside the comments on YouTube. Who could ever believe that? But it's very, very true. I'm really looking forward to your comments. This is an important thing to discuss. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends, and Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.